You should be there to catch your grandpa when he falls. <laughs> Unacceptable. I was at oh, don't start that stuff with me. Um, let's go over the review here. Listen, I don't care that we study a lot of stuff, but what I do care about is that what we do study, you remember it, and you know your stuff. That's what I care about, okay? So let's go over everything from the start, okay? I don't know how to do games. You tell me how to do a game. If we, if we open... Yeah, that's a good idea, but I didn't prepare it. I, don't, I didn't prepare, like, questions, you know? So... Also, this isn't fiqh. If it was fiqh, it would be much easier. You know fiqh? What is fiqh? Fiqh is the study of the law. The law. Okay, the first thing that we looked at is the hadith of intentions. And then we looked at hadith Jibreel in some but not in all. And that's all we really want to do this semester. But we want to beat this down like a, you know, beat it into ourselves. So let's go through the first thing. Actions are by intentions. And revise what we looked at uh, regarding sincerity. Okay. When it comes to sincerity, ikhlas is not a fuzzy thing in, in, in our religion, right? It's not a fuzzy thing. It's, we have very clear lines demarcating uh, uh, how we have to be sincere and, and what sincerity is. So the first thing that we did is we divided actions into two types. Who remembers this? Okay, let's hear it. We divided actions. This is something important for your whole life. You'll never not need this piece of information. All right, what, is, what are the two types of actions that we have? Yeah, the two types of actions. Yeah. Good. So, so the first type of action is the mundane action. Give me an example. Let's go to what is a mundane action? Walking down the street. Down the street. It's a mundane action. What else is a mundane action? How about um, your soccer team succeeds, wins, so you have a party. This is all a mundane action, right? How about there's an old lady crossing the street, you help her. This is a mundane action. This is not an act of uh, uh, ritual worship, right? So that's the second part, ritual worship. So what is the definition of an act of ritual worship? Yeah. Yeah, anything that the prophets have come down, or the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, has come and specifically taught us, this is how you worship, Allah wants you to do this and this and this. What's one of the main differences between a ritual act of worship and a mundane action? What is the, what is the number, one of the main differences between these two? If you see two people, one is doing one, one's doing the other. How do you know the difference? Good. Now, when there's a ritual act of worship, this act is not what we call rationally comprehensible, which means that if someone's walking across the street, you're helping an old lady across the street, everyone understands what that is. But when you're doing salah, no one understands what that is unless they understand the religion, right? No one would ever do that action, right, of prayer, except that they were taught by a prophet, okay? No one will ever do the rituals of hajj. So rituals do not look like normal actions, right? They're different from that respect. So when we talk about intention related to the two, okay, let's talk about that. Yusuf, give me some knowledge. Drop some knowledge on us. When it comes to the actual uh, intention, all right, for the two. All right, so if you make intention for, like, for a mundane action that you're doing it for Allah as well, don't you get, you get reward for that? Yeah. And then for, but you don't have to necessarily make Good. So let's stop there for a second. When it comes to a mundane act, you don't need to have an intention. But if you don't, you're wasting a chance, right? To be, to receive some kind of credit with Allah Azza wa Jal. Right? You can get some credit by making a mundane action to be, to have an intention. All right? 
So even the most mundane actions, the Prophet taught us to make an intention. All right? Even sleeping has an intention. All right? You sleep with the intention to revive your body, to wake up, and to do good in the earth. Okay? As the prophets defined what is good. All right? Even eating has an intention. When someone offers you food, to eat their food right? and enjoy it, you're making them happy. All, every single mundane action can have an intention. And wherever it really can't have an intention, the Prophet, peace be upon him, put a dhikr in front of it and after it. Right? Like the Prophet, peace be upon him, he said, before you go to the bathroom, there's a dhikr to say. Right? And after you, while you're going to the bathroom, there are some rules to abide by. Like you don't talk. Right? You're not supposed to talk while you're going to the bathroom. Uh, you're also supposed to use your left hand when you clean yourself. You're all supposed to use water when you clean yourself. Then when you leave the bathroom, there's another dhikr to say. So even something so mundane as going to the bathroom, the Prophet, peace be upon him, has taught us ways by which okay, we can render this simple mundane act that everyone does, animals do, that you can end up getting rewards for it in the sight of Allah and on the Day of Judgment. Okay? So this was really the first thing. Now we need to talk about all right, uh, you're going to tell us about the issue of intention regarding ritual worship. Because here is where it gets big. We said for mundane, it's either neutral. And also, by the way, mundane actions could be bad too. All right? You could do a mundane action and you could get sins for it. Right? Depending on your purpose, your intention. All right? You could do something that looks good. Right? But in fact, you're intention behind it is bad someone can give me an example for this give me an example of something that it looks like it's a good deed but in fact you're purposely doing it with a negative like purpose mundane or no a mundane act think of a mundane act you could do that it, it looks like it's good but in fact right there's negativity there's a negative purpose behind it Giving charity, giving charity so that you can have control. That's a very good example, right? So what do, what do all these businesses and stuff, when they give charity to, let's say, a politician, is it because he wants a politician to help the people? So he wants to have some control, right? Yeah. Or they give charity to like a, a storm in Haiti or something, right? Or a tornado hits Haiti or earthquake. It's just to get his taxes removed, right? So this is something that it looks like it's good. But Allah Azza wa Jalla knows the people's intentions, right? He knows people's intentions. You're never going to get good if you didn't intend good. And if you intended good, the act needs to be according to the sunnah of the Prophet, peace be upon him. Not every good intention is rewarded by Allah, right? There are people who have good intentions, they giving out beer. Is that, are you going to get rewarded from Allah? You might get forgiven because you didn't know better, right? Allah can forgive. But in order for us to get rewarded by Allah, we need two things. Number one, intention. But number two, what's the second thing? The action has to be good. Right? It has to be good according to the Prophet, peace be upon him. According to the Sunnah and the sacred law. Take this example. A doctor, he has a good intention doing a surgery, right? No doctor goes in and says, I'm going to kill this guy. Okay? Every doctor goes into a surgery with a good intention. Right? Now he messes it up and you get messed up. Is there a consequence or not? Is he getting sued or not? Yusuf, surgery, you break your nose. A surgeon does it and messes up your nose. Is, he, is there going to be a lawsuit or not? He says, I'm seriously, I really didn't mean it. It doesn't matter if you meant it or not. You're getting sued. Right? I'm going to get some compensation for this. It does, huh? If he meant, we'll never know anyway. Right? Unless he left some trace of evidence. So this is the same thing with Allah. You can't just do good because you want to. You have to do good according to how the prophets taught us what goodness is. Right? How the prophet taught us what is goodness. Okay? So this is that. Now let's go back to Kinza. When it comes to ritual worship, talk to me about intention regarding ritual worship. Correct. With 
ritual worship, it's very strict. Very strict. Okay? You can only do ritual worship for the sake of Allah. Only. Otherwise, what is it? What is it otherwise? Riya and hypocrisy. And it is from the lowest levels of hell. Allah Azza wa Jal, He's a very clear God. He's saying, when you worship, you better be sincere. Or don't, don't even fix yourself. You have two options when we're not sincere. And by the way, youth, us Muslim youth born as Muslims, we are the non-believer, he has to struggle to find Islam, right? They've got to struggle to find the truth, right? Us as born Muslims, we have a different struggle. This is our struggle. We are brought into Islam without our choice. And we are taught to do these acts of worship and taught to come to classes and taught to come to Ramadan and fast and pray and do all these things, right? Our struggle is that we have two options in front of us. We could either stop doing these things or fix our intention. You Muslims, you young people, you have cho a choice. You either don't do it at all or you fix your intention and do it right. Otherwise, you're in the middle and you're wasting your time. And you're a hypocrite. This is why to be born Muslim is not easy. It's very difficult. Someone who's born not a Muslim, they have a choice. They got to look through all the paths in the world and the religions and the philosophies and figure out what's true. Right? But someone who is a Muslim, you have a clear choice, but it's very difficult. It's very difficult. Your, your parents will expect you to wear a hijab, dress appropriately, come to classes, be a good Muslim, do all these things, right? That are not general goodness. Like, telling the truth is general goodness. Everyone in the world loves the truth, right? No one in the world loves a liar. No one in the world loves someone who's backbiting. No one in the world loves someone stingy. These are general goodness that's all over the world. But Islam is teaching us very specific forms of goodness, right? And very specific forms of things that are bad that the society is telling us is good, like homosexuality, like just having a boyfriend and girlfriend and sleeping around, okay? This the society has accepted as good, but your parents and your religion and your imams and your masjid is teaching you something very specific that's bad and very specific that's good, and here you are, this is your test in life, you're stuck in it, you're born into it, now you have to make a choice, right? This is why this hadith is very important. You have to make a choice. Am I going to be a hypocrite and be in the middle? Or am I going to leave it off? Or am I going to actually understand what this, who this God is, who this prophet is, study it, and then when I come to a conclusion, I'm going to follow it 100%. Right? Nothing else makes sense. And by the way, if you pick the middle, if you pick the middle where you say, I got to do it, I have no choice, but I don't really believe it, then you are a coward and a monafic. You are, this is the worst. This is even the kuffar will not like you. The kuffar will say, "Listen, I need to know what you are. Do you believe in this thing or not?" You know that there are many guys and girls who are to totally confusing everyone else. There are girls who wear hijab and go to parties and smoke weed and drink. The guys are like, "Listen, tell me what you are. Are you a Muslim or not? I need to know what your status is, right? So I can either pursue you or I don't pursue you. I need to know what you are. Don't be in the middle." And, and guys do the same thing, right? They do the same thing. Praying Aisha, and then they go to clubs, right? So we're trying to figure out, am I supposed to trust you like you're in the masjid? Or which one are you, right? The sin of a mu'min. What is the sin of a believer? You have to understand this very well. The sin of a believer is that which comes out of him. Either inability to do something obligatory. Or he falls for temptation while he doesn't like it. This is the sin of the believer. While he does, he knows it's wrong, but he's, we're humans, right? Your human temptation conquers you. And your human weakness conquers you. Okay? But you hate it while you're doing it. You miss Fajr and you hate missing Fajr. And you wake up telling yourself, tomorrow I'm going to make Fajr. Or you're unable to control your temptation and you hate your inability to control your temptation. Okay? You hate it. This is the sin of the believer. And Allah says, if this is the state of a person, 
then this person eventually will figure things out and Allah will forgive him. But who does Allah not accept? He does not accept the one who has no commitment either way. He's not made a commitment to him. Allah loves the one who makes a commitment to him, but is weak like all of us, right? All of us, we make our commitment to Allah and we're weak. This whole point of this class is not to make you perfect people, like all of a sudden you're wearing hijab, all of a sudden you don't have a boyfriend or a girlfriend. I don't expect this from you right now. What I expect from you is to make a commitment to Allah Azza wa Jal and to start studying who is God, who is the Prophet, let me make a commitment. Don't care if you're perfect or imperfect. In fact, you'll never be perfect and we'll never be perfect. And the people today, if you're living in the modern world, is filled with garbage. The sheikhs reading Quran, we're not perfect. No one's perfect. And Allah never expected perfection. But He expected a commitment one way or the other. And this is why this hadith really is so important. When we do these ritual worships, what's it, what is in fact something that is a ritual worship? Like hijab for a woman is not something you would ever do on your own. You only do it because God told you to do it. Right? A man not wearing gold, he would only do it. It's not something he would ever think of. So therefore, when we do these things, our intention has to be sound. And when we fail at doing these things, we should fail while weeping inside of ourselves and knowing, I made a mistake. I'm weak, may Allah strengthen me. You shouldn't say, I'm weak, so the religion has to change. Right? Some people do this, right? They say, I can't do it. Give me another angle in the religion. Give me something else. No. We say, I'm weak, so Allah strengthen me. Because you believe this is right. Right? If you believe it's right, then your answer should be, I'm weak. So oh Allah, strengthen me. Okay? So this is uh, the importance of getting our intention correct. So we need to get our compass in order. We need to get our compass in order. Okay? Our compass has to be in order. This is more important than getting to our destination right now. Okay? So you understand now that any action done, ritual worship done, okay, uh, without the sound intention, then you're one of these people that's in the middle. Right? You're in the middle. Neither are you this way or that way. Right? And you don't want to be this type of person. Okay? Number two, we looked at what this hadith does not mean. And we already covered this, right? This hadith, actions are by intention, does not mean that intention is the only thing required for Allah to reward an action and accept it. What is the other thing? Let's go, someone raise their hand. What is the other thing, which we've said, is required for an act to be considered good? Yusuf? It has to be done the way the Prophet It's got to be done according to how the Prophet, peace be upon him, defined goodness. Why is that? Allah created us, and He sent us a manual, right, of right and wrong. Who defines what's good? This is a very important question in philosophy. Who is it that defines what is good and what is bad? Let's say if I come to your house, right, can I go start making rules and say, look, I can wear shoes in the house if I want to. Why not? Because it's not my house. If you come into the theater and you say, I want to keep my phone on. I want my ringer to be on. I need my ringer to be on. Is it allowed or not? When, when we accept God and His Prophet, what are we accepting about Allah? What is, what is the main relationship between us and Allah? He's our Creator, right? He owns us. So who has the right to tell us how to use our body and how to use our minds and how to use our hearts? Only the Creator. The Creator is the only one who has the absolute right to tell us what is good and what is bad. And as a result, if we want to do good, if we want to do good, okay, if we want to do good, who is it that defines goodness? Only the prophets. And where Allah and His Messenger are silent on a matter, the Prophet ﷺ said, Allah has never remained silent upon a matter except out of wisdom so that you can all figure it out yourselves. Right? Allah has remained silent. Like what? Like Allah never said you have to have a ramp for the handicapped. We figure that out ourselves. Right? Allah never said certain safety laws, traffic laws. We figure that out ourselves. But Allah did tell us what foods we cannot eat, what foods we can eat, right? 
certain behaviors you can do, how to conduct a marriage, how to conduct a divorce, all right, all these things. All right, what kind of financial contracts are valid and what kinds are not. Okay. Now, so that's the second thing which was what this hadith does not mean. It does not mean that uh, intention is the only thing. We need the sunnah as well. Does anyone have any comments or questions so far? Does anyone have anything in their mind that they want to say? All right. How about changing intentions halfway through? Like, where does the intention can be? Does the intention have to be at the beginning? Can it be in the middle? Can it be in the end? And this question applies for both mundane acts and ritual acts. So let's start with mundane acts. Who has their hand up? All right. For mundane acts, tell me about this. Yeah. Good. So when it comes to the timing of intention and the nature of the intention for mundane actions, you can change your intention halfway through and get rewarded for the whole thing. And you can change your intention afterwards and get it, uh, uh, get it uh, rewarded for the whole thing. Like what? Like you helped a brother move, right? You help the brother move. You spend all day helping someone move from one apartment to the other. And you never thought, oh, to make an intention. Can you make, what's the result of this action? What you could do is at the end of the day is say, oh Allah, I forgot to make intention. Make this act like a type of sadaqah for me. And it's accepted, right? But if you come upon a group of people making salah, okay, then you just join them and you prayed four rak'ahs with them. Then you say, hold on, what prayer is this? And you say, hey, what prayer, what did you just pray? And he says, Aisha. He said, actually, I didn't pray Asr. Let me make it Asr. You can't do that, right? You cannot do that. So for ritual acts like fasting, zakah, hajj, umrah, salah, right? You have to specify the intention right away. Right? You got to specify the intention before you begin. Okay? Before you begin. Okay. All right. Here's a, here's, this is the hard part. How do we correct our intention? Let's say you've been a Muslim for like, you're all, maybe you've been children for a while, then you become adults, maybe, or young adults, maybe two, three years ago. You all became young adults, right? Before that, you were kids. Now you're actually an adult. Adulthood doesn't begin at 18. In Sharia, adulthood begins at the onset of puberty. As soon as a boy or girl hits puberty, Allah sends down another angel. And that's, the game is serious now. It's not a game anymore. You're, it's serious. So how do we correct our intention? Or let's say someone was a Muslim for 20 years and never studied anything, never did anything, just moseying through life, then he changed his intention. Okay? How do we do it? How do we change our intention and make a U-turn? If we're headed down one path, how do we make that U-turn? If, if it's in a car, you hit the brake, you turn the wheel, you hit the gas, you turn the wheel a little bit more, turn the brake a little bit, and then you move. You make a U-turn. How do we do this in life? How do we do it when it comes to deen? Yeah. Number one. What is it that the deen has that nothing else has? Is that this deen is telling us this deen is not just for your life. This is for eternal afterlife. Eternal afterlife. Therefore, the remembrance of death is extremely critical. The remembrance of death right, is very important. Extremely critical. Why is it that young people behave like crazy? Right? 
Why is it that young people are erratic in their behavior? All young people, not just this. Everyone thinks, oh, just this generation. Well, young people, did they change? Young people have always been young people, right? They all act crazy relative to their elders. Why? Because they view life as far ahead of them, that they got a long way to live, that there's time to make up for your mistakes. Why are older people more serious and cautious about certain things? Because they see death is like at 70 years old. People tend to die at the age of 70, 80, and I'm hitting 50. Now, khalas, I'm, right, I'm at the finish line. I better fix things quick, right? When you're young, how do you die when you're young? Freak accident, right? So you say to yourself, I'm not going to have a freak accident. What's the chances? When you're old, how do people die? You just die because that's it. Time's up. No one's going to live past 100, 120, 150. This is the rare exception. Most people, right? You're hitting. Once you start pushing 65 and 70 and 80, halas, the statistics are against you. The clock is running out. You better fix your situation. But one of the things that I want you to do is be smart. Don't wait till you hit 60 and 70. Then it's too late. Then it's way too late. You need to fix, the, take the U-turn now by remembering death intentionally. The young person remembers death as an act of worship. The old person remembers death because it's staring him in the face. Death is coming to him. You have no choice but to remember death. But you should be smart and think about death from now and prepare your life from now. So when death is coming to you, when you hit start push, pushing to age 70, you're 65, you're 72, which is going to happen. You can't imagine it, but it will happen. And death is coming to you, you should say, I'm ready. I've been preparing for you for a long time. I'm totally ready. And this is why religious people, all religious people of all religions, when they get old, they get more relaxed. They're not worried to die. They've been preparing for death. Right? They've been preparing for death. Luckily, we say, you prepared, but you prepared wrong. The other deans, we hope Allah can forgive you, but you prepared incorrectly. You studied for the wrong test. You studied, yeah, right? But for the wrong test. We have the fortune that we've been born into the religion of the last messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If there's like 10 review sheets, right? If there are 10 versions of an exam, and someone studied for one version, he studied hard, but for one version, then what? Then what? Right? Yeah, you studied hard, but for the wrong version. But if you studied for all ten, and this is what Islam is, this is the last messenger, there's no one after him. Right? If you studied this version, that means you've got everything covered. Right? So this is the importance of belief in the Prophet, peace be upon him. So remembrance of that. Number two, you change, you correct your intention by learning. Our religion is a religion of knowledge. Knowledge was mentioned in the Quran 800 times. 800 times Allah Azza wa Jal alluded to knowledge in the Quran. If you are ignorant in this religion, you're going to be in trouble. Tell me, what do you guys aspire to when you guys grow, when you guys uh, go off to college and afterwards? Mikhail, what you, what's your aspiration? You have any aspirations yet? You haven't gotten there yet? How about you? Anything? Nothing. Like none of you grew up and said, hey, I when you were six, no one said, do you, what do you want to do? And you said, I want to be a fireman or astronaut. Like those conversations don't exist anymore or what? What do you want to be like? Uh, are you guys like millennials? You just want to work at a fair trade coffee shop or something? Oh, huh? A lawyer. Good. Finally, someone said something. What else? How about you? No, okay, you haven't gotten there yet. But you know, like nothing's crossed your mind at all. Nothing. Yeah, you don't have to have one, right? And you change it however you want when you're young. But you got to have some aspiration, right? And when you have that aspiration, any aspiration that you want, what is it that's going to differentiate between you and someone else? Like two people want to be a lawyer. What's going to be the difference? The difference is who knows more about the law. It's knowledge. The key is knowledge. And once someone believes in Allah, that means... You are working now for life after this life. What do you need? You need knowledge. You need knowledge. Okay? This is really what you need. So the third thing is the company that you keep. 
the company that you keep. Tell me, someone wants to be a lawyer, who should he hang out with? Lawyers. Successful, successful ones or failed ones? If you, if you hang out, you can benefit a lot from keeping the company of a failed lawyer if you keep your eye out for his bad habits so you can avoid them, right? This is why in a family, if there's a bad Muslim in a family, usually the rest of the people become good because they see the result of failure, right? You see a kid, he's wayward, right? He's wayward. You see the negative result of this waywardness. Usually it has a positive effect on everyone else. So that's why sometimes there's a wisdom why some people go astray. So that everyone else could see the result. So yeah, it does make sense to take a peek at failed lawyers with that purpose, with that intention. But otherwise, you need to hang out with real lawyers, successful lawyers. All right? So now... What is the sign of a good intention? What is the sign of a good intention? Number one, that the action is in accordance to the sacred law. This is number one. The action is accordance to the sunnah of the Prophet, peace be upon him. That's a sign that your intention is good. Number two, what is number two? Number one, that you have submitted your actions to be in accordance with the sacred law. Okay, what's number two? Yep. The sign that Allah, that your acts, your intention is sound, is peace of heart in your, in, within you, serenity and peace of mind inside of you. Wasn't this class so much better when it wasn't noisy with all these little kids? I think we got to change the day. We cannot have kid class with these kids anymore, right? Too noisy. Now the kids are going to come and they're going to start up and it's going to be a headache again. No, we have class again next week. Yeah. Now, the second thing is we got to, when you do something for the right reason, not for yourself, it feels good. Allah has made it like this. You feel relaxed. You feel sakina. Allah says in the Quran, whoever remembers Allah has sakina in his heart. That means whoever does an action for Allah, Allah immediately rewards him right away with a feeling in his heart. Then the person becomes addicted to goodness, to doing these good actions, but then shaitan tries to come and corrupt it. And of the Prophet, Allah has made that if an action, if an action is bad, or selfish, then Allah Azza wa Jal fills the heart with all sorts of grief, like greed, envy, hatred, jealousy, all covetousness, desire, all of these negatives in the heart when an action is done for selfish reasons. Lastly, the third thing, if you're doing something truly for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal, you will find yourself not having conflicts with the people not having conflicts with people. in contrast if you're doing something for yourself then you have all sorts of conflicts envy right competition all these negatives okay all right uh, the origin of this hadith who remembers the origin of this hadith who remembers the origin of this hadith um Qais. so who is he um Qais. Who is the muhajir of Umm Qais? Do you remember? Let's hear it. Okay. Well, we usually say, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, keep going, just keep going. You get, you're on the right track, yeah. You're on the right track. Do you know how to talk? <laughs> then what's the problem? Wait, and then he like... Wait, I forgot. Yeah. So, Uphokais was like, this man wanted to marry a Muslim woman. Good. And this Muslim woman, she was making a hijra. Good. And he, she said she would only marry him if he 
converted to Islam and made hijra with her. Correct. And so he did. Good. But he made it because he wanted to marry her, and they would all like you know, make fun of him and like say that oh he only did it for like her. So they gave him like this nickname. Muhajir al Makais. Good. So this man he did not want to become Muslim or make hijra. Everyone knew it, right? He only did it when she asked him, said, if you're going to marry me, you need to be on this path. So he became known as Muhajir Umm Qais. So the Prophet then took that as a chance to teach people the importance all right, of intentions. I don't know the history of that man, actually. That's a good question. All right. Can we make multiple intentions for one action? Yes. What is the limitation? There's a limit, though, on certain certain actions can only have one intention. Which actions are those? Huh? The obligatory ritual acts, right? The obligatory ritual. So, if something is an extra action, like what? Like, for example, I want to pray two rakas in the masjid, but I also want to pray two rakas out of repentance, and I want to pray two rakas for istikhara prayer, right? And I want to pray two rakahs to make up a sunnah that I missed. You can make all of those intentions in one. But if it's dhuhr, asr, maghrib, isha, or a Ramadan fast, or otherwise, you can only make one intention. So for the obligatory actions, you can only make one intention. Now lastly, we are looking at worldly benefits. This subject matter here does not just benefit your religion. The subject matter here benefits your worldly life. Benefits your worldly life. How does this subject matter benefit your worldly life? How does this subject matter here benefit your worldly life? Think about this. Who has a clue? Huh? This subject benefits your worldly life because literally speaking, your actions will only be sensible or successful if they are focused. This hadith is teaching us to focus. Make your intention clear. If you're walking somewhere, you got to have an intention. If you're going to open your textbook, have an intention. Are you going to study for your exam or are you going to fool around. If you're going to study, then eliminate all other distractions. You fool around. Easy. You open it up. You look at two pages. I need to have a snack. <laughs> Time to take. You're having a snack right now. You separate yourselves. You guys are like third graders, honestly. Separate yourselves. Get this one here, that one, and move her over. Let her sit next to between these th Sit right there. Maybe by osmosis. Right? You'll get some maturity will happen from osmosis, maybe. And by the way, what are you eating, secondly? Who? Give me that. Let me see some of that. I didn't... Huh? You ate the whole thing? I didn't have my dinner to... Give me that. I didn't have my dinner to come and educate you, and you're coming there having a crunchy bar, whatever this thing is. How old is this thing? No, it's Halloween. Of this year? You never know these things sit around for decades. They never even change the label. That's why they don't change the label. You know this, right? If they change the label every year, then we're going to know. They, do change the label. they don't change the label. Every year, like it's every decade or so. Yeah, every decade. So the thing will be sitting there in a warehouse, and then we're consuming it. Who knows what's inside of it? Yeah. I'm eating it, man. I didn't have dinner to come teach you guys. Give me everything you got. Everything you got, man. What do you do? How much trick or treating did you do? I don't trick or treat. Ayub doesn't trick or treat. I can't say it's haram, but I just don't do it. My kids don't do it. How are you talking about this? You all understand how this subject of intention actually transmits to your worldly life, right? Many people, why they don't really succeed in anything they do 
is they are not focused. Their intention is not clear. Okay? Even when you talk, when you're talking to someone, you got to have an intention. Why are you going to talk to that person? What is your purpose? What is your goal? What are you trying to get out of it? Pile it on right here. I got, I got one more class to go, so. Okay. You can be hungry enough at some point. So if you're starving in the desert and you've only got like a 10 year old candy bar, would you eat it? We're starving in the desert. And I see a lizard, I'm eating it. You know that in the desert they have the lizard? A desert lizard? How would you catch it? You gotta catch it, man. You gotta catch it and slaughter it. Uh, what's that? Who? What's temple mean? What's that? No, listen. You want to learn something about the desert? You go look up the dub. The desert lizard has nerves that continue to move even after it's been killed, even if it's in the pan or in the plate or in the fridge. You want to see it? Let's look it up. All right, so you, while I'm looking this up, I want you to mentally, in your head, you remember these nine things that we talked about in tension. All right? We reviewed them. This is benefit, right? We might not finish the review of the whole thing, but who cares? As long as you're benefiting from something, okay? This is the point of this class. All right? Is to benefit and is not just simply to, to pass a test. Uh, all right. All right, come and take a look. Come and stand behind me and take a look. Ew. See? Oh, that's so that, Ew. that thing has been killed. It's been skinned. It's sitting in the tray, raw. It hasn't been cooked yet. And look at that. Wait, See? Okay, it's bye, it's bye, opened bye. up. Yeah. This is because the nature of the nerves, when it reacts with oxygen, it shakes. Yeah. Okay. This? It's a lizard. It's a lizard. It's a lizard. See, the, see this lizard? Right? They actually eat this? Yeah. When you're in the desert, you eat anything. Look at that. See that? It's already skinned. Its foot's been chopped off, hand chopped off. But the nature of the nerves is that when oxygen touches the nerves, it moves. That's all it is. Huh? I got this because I'm hungry. Because this is a And you guys are sitting there eating. Your sister Yo, and you eat eating. I didn't eat anything. In class. While I skip dinner just so I could teach you guys stuff. We should, we should take a group field trip. You fasted? Yeah. We fasted. See the dub? This is the dub. He's catching it. He's catching it. This is, you have to know your history of the desert, your prophets from the desert. Look at this little white girl taking a little picture of herself. This is a big deal for her. Oh, I'm in the lands of the Arab. She actually looks Asian. She's going to catch it. Got it. <laughs> they have to make a video out of it. That's not that fast. It really is. It's a baby, that anyway. It's a baby. What is that bite? Yeah, it's it's a little white girl coughing. Now, Kate, what is she doing to your neck? Oh my God. She dropped. It bit it, I think. Watch. It's going to turn and bite it right now. Yeah, I want to see. No, they want to bite it. Ew, why is it moving like that? Oh. There, see that? All right, that's good. See that? Ew, what is it that's like a desert. Like? That's how it looks. It looks like a turtle. That's Ooh, a desert that lizard. Guys, I used to have is your right. entire computer an hour? So, like, if you bit it and you ate no, it, it would be moving inside of you. No, once it's deprived of oxygen, I don't think it can. I eat it. I bet it lettuce. Is there oxygen inside of you? Well, in your red blood cells, but it won't. Yeah, but not like inside the enzymes. And then my cat dies. All right, kids. 
Young Youth of America. Class, class is technically over. Your class today was a revision of the nine. All right. Next week we're going to study some more, and maybe we'll give you some examination on two things. Right, the Mohlikat and the Munjiat. Right. Just, just focus on that. Huh? What do you mean not that again? No, not that again. Why? You, you, you know it already? Yeah, I know it. Yeah. 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 You want to study something else? Yeah. All right. We'll take another class next week on Nubuwa. All right. Prophethood. Wait, is it? Yo. You do no, have a test on these nine. This nine. You hang out with my mom too much. Just this nine. I want you to study these nine things, but I need you to know them perfectly. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. The nine things we just talked about in tension. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Well, you guys are the ones saying it's too much. No. Aren't you guys wanting? Yeah, I said you. Huh? Just tell me what you want, you want me to do. Okay, listen. Professor. Listen, if you guys, if you guys are more ambitious, then that's good. I'm surprised. I thought you guys thought this was too much. Then listen, you go to the discussions on Canvas. How do you even join that? Look, you got actions are by intention. Hadith Jibreel, faith and hypocrisy, spiritual excellence, all right, and stop there. Don't do signs at the end of time, all right? Don't study signs at the end of time. And we will take a test. Uh, let me repeat. We're taking a test on actions or by intentions. We're going to take the test on faith and hypocrisy right here, class three. And then we're taking a test on muhlikat and munjiat. Didn't we already take it? This is... This is what you're taking a test on. Four things. The test will, the, one, the two, test two, will be half an hour. Then we're going to review it all. <laughs> Next week. That's your test. For... No, but they said it's not. A, they want. They have more ambition. Listen, I'm going to write it in the... Don't drive me crazy. I'm writing it in here. One. Wait, I have a question. Actions are by intentions. Number two, faith and hypocrisy. Number three, muhlikat. Number four, munjiat. You see this, kids? Yes. Yes, I mean, you got this? Are you on canvas? You're not on canvas? You got to get on canvas. It wouldn't let me join it. Do you want me to show you or try to join it right now? Who, are you on campus, Kenza? Yeah, yeah. You need to help these girls get on campus. Yo, it wouldn't let me After, wait, wait, when this class is over, uh, listen. are you doing something no, else? Yeah, but it, yeah I we have another class. Should we know I swear. Yeah, you have to know the Arabic. Yo, I have to sell what you. What else are you going to know? What to do? No, you can't <laughs> No, English Yo. and Arabic. Yeah, like, oh, wait, okay. I actually did that. Dr. Shabby. Yes. Is you hang out my mom too much. Every little thing I want to do, she's like, what should I do? Actions are by intentions, faith and hypocrisy. I'm not so much and like no, I'm not kidding. You know, you need to stop. No, you need to stop. Can huh? no. we just not do the Arabic? <laughs> can we just not do the Arabic? Listen, just, no. listen. Yeah. just do what you can. Okay? <laughs> just do what you can. Huh? I have a question. What did you say? <laughs> No, oh, Kenza, you're, uh, she's on volunteer hours anyway, so you're going to help them out, okay? Raise your hand if you're not on campus. Oh, my God. All right, Kenza, take them take a look. Get them, on. Get them all, uh, all the lectures, the classes, the materials. Stop it, everyone off. Why? Because everything I want to do, she's like, would Dr. Shabby approve? I don't know if that's a good thing. Wait, yeah. do you have a question? Like, an actual question that you have to answer? Yeah, okay, we are so, done. Oh, we're done. So I have, done. I have my friend's father. Um, the other day we were in the car, and he was telling me how um, he was like a Qurani Muslim, and how he what is that? No such thing. Basically, they right? in just the Quran and like not following anything. Who said that? My friend's father. You better not be on that. That's you? No, no my no, friend's no. father. I just wanted to know what he meant. Like, like, a, like I wanted to like, get it. It means that they only take religion from Quran and not from the prophet, these people. Oh, that's Any questions? Look up hashtag Safina QA on YouTube and Instagram. Follow us online at safinasociety.org.